Gabriel Garcia Marquez is widely regarded as one of the most important writers of the 20th century. An author of both novels and short fiction, in 1982 he won the Nobel Prize and is probably best known for his novel A Hundred Years of Solitude. I've gathered some of his thoughts and quotes about writing, so let's start with his slightly different take on a classic piece of writing advice, write what you know. If I had to give a young writer some advice, I'd say to write about something that has happened to him. It's always easy to tell whether a writer is writing about something that's happened to him or something he's read or been told. There's two sides to this piece of advice, I think. There's the first side, which is the age-old, often debated, write what you know. I'm sure I've tackled write what you know in another author advice video somewhere, but my stance is somewhere in the middle. While I agree that you need to have some idea about what you're writing about and some kind of insight into it in order to properly demonstrate the points that you're making and to make your writing somewhat authentic. I also think fiction is about making stuff up. That's kind of the point. If we stuck completely within the bounds of things that we have first-hand experience of and knowledge of, then there'd be fewer stories and they might not be as inventive. But the most interesting part of this advice for me is the twist that he's put on it by saying you can always tell when a writer's talking about something that they've really got no experience of. I think that's definitely true. I don't have a specific example from a specific piece of work, but I think you can always tell this with stuff like the representation of drugs. It can be quite obvious when, like me, an author with no experience of drugs whatsoever writes them into their story. It just feels like there's some fundamental lack of understanding there, and then that makes the whole thing feel really artificial and obvious. I just want to take a few seconds to remind you about the developmental editing service that I run on my website. If you've got a piece of a novel or some short fiction that you really would like some feedback on, check out the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen. Right, back to the video. The counterpoint to this, of course, is research. So we've got experience on one hand and research on the other. I don't know whether they can ever really be balanced. I think experience is always going to count for a little bit more than research does. However, I suppose it depends on how deeply you go into this kind of stuff when you're writing and how deeply you go into the subject that you've researched. If it's just a passing mention or a fleeting thing, then a lot of research is probably enough to get you through that. But if you're basing your novel entirely around something that you've no real experience in and you're hoping that you can just Google a few things or maybe take a couple of books out of the library and that's all you need to know, I'd worry about authenticity in that case. I don't want to discourage anyone because you might be one of the writers that is able to research that and make a story out of that that's convincing and real and makes a valid point. Absolutely. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I'm saying it's really obvious when it doesn't work. I'm not on YouTube to pass on my limiting beliefs to other writers. Quite the opposite. I want you to feel empowered to go out and tell whatever story you want to tell. But I'd probably suggest just go further with your research if you don't have that first-hand knowledge of the subject that you're writing about. Go a little further than you need to. And to give one final thought on this, it's hard to do and it takes you out of your comfort zone, but I think talking to people with experience is always going to be better than reading stuff online. If all you can do is email someone and ask them if they've got a little bit of time to talk to you about a certain subject, I think you'll be surprised how much you can get from that. A novelist can do anything he wants so long as he makes people believe in it. Interesting point which kind of carries on from the last one really, but to me what jumped into my mind when I read that quote is my relationship with fantasy books. I'm not a big fan of the fantasy genre in general. I think the vast majority of fantasy stories aren't for me and it's not something that I would ever really get into. However, there are exceptions, there are fantasy books that I love and it's not because of the, the genre or what the stories are about, it's really all about how they're written. It's about the presentation or the execution of the writing. That's what makes me believe in the writer and that's what makes me believe in the story. You can absolutely sell me a story that I don't think I'm going to like at all if your writing is really good. I think that's one of the highest compliments you could give an author. I don't really read in your genre, but I love your books. And when you ask me what it is about those writers that makes me believe their work, it's because they don't use fantasy to propel the story or to make the story or to support the story. They use the fantasy elements of those stories to reflect reality and real life. That's why it gets my buy-in, if that makes sense. Some fantasy to me feels like an absolute departure from this reality, an escape from it, which is totally understandable, but it's not something that I really enjoy because I find I can't relate to it 
in the same way I can from other genres. But fantasy that doesn't ignore or escape our world but wants to reflect and comment on it, that's the stuff that I really like and it's because I believe in what those authors are saying because of how they write their stories. That was a really convoluted way for me to say I agree with this point. I think novelists can get anything they want into their stories as long as they make readers believe it. And to me, they can achieve that through the quality of their writing and their reflections on humanity. In general, I believe you write better when you have all the creature comforts around you. I don't hold with the romantic myth that the writer has to be starving and all screwed up before he can produce. You write better if you've had a good meal and you've got an electric typewriter. If you saw my last video with Toni Morrison's writing tips, she said something really similar about creature comforts being important to the writing process. So I won't go too far into that aspect of this tip, but suffice to say, I agree with it. What occurred to me when I read this quote is that this concept can kind of be expanded into something a bit bigger. He talked about the fact that you don't have to be starving in order to write a good book, and that made me think about the whole starving artist thing. That's something that's made me feel some type of way about me and my own writing several times over the years, because I thought, well, I'm just really quite a normal person. We're just normal men. We're just normal men. Because you do see a kind of vocal minority of people saying, if you haven't got something that's worth saying that you can add to the canon of literature, then don't bother writing anything. If you've never experienced anything, go out and have adventures and then try writing. Yeah, maybe that'll help, but is it an absolute necessity? I don't think so. I've worked a normal full-time job ever since I came out of university and I've been writing the whole time. I've never really fell short on things to write about and I've always felt like I'm doing it with purpose and communicating some kind of meaning or some kind of part of the human condition. And that's not because I've experienced something in particular that I needed to write about, some experience that made me realize all this stuff. It's just naturally been a part of my writing and the reason that I do it. And I'm not trying to flex about my own writing by saying that. I just mean people come across their reasons for writing in different ways. Don't feel squashed by a loud person with massive experiences telling you you need to have the same, otherwise your writing's useless. It's not the case. You can lead your quiet life feeling all the things that you feel and you can get that down on paper. That's totally valid as well. Both ways work. I really think Garcia Marquez probably just meant it's fine to eat something and sit at a nice desk and write, and I've kind of expanded that into something entirely else, but hopefully you get the point. It's much more important to write than to be written about. One thing that I think was very important about my literary career was that until I was 40 years old, I never got one cent of author's royalties, though I'd had five books published. This is something I'm acutely aware of since I make content about writing and arguably my content about writing gets seen way more than my actual writing does. And I absolutely agree with what he says and it's something that I think about a lot. I think, uh, do I spend more time making content about writing than actual writing? Are other writers going to sit there and think, you make YouTube videos, you don't actually write anything. And if you do, how much time are you really spending? How much do you really know about it? I'm aware that people will think that. And I'm not trying to justify my own existence on my own channel here, but the way it works for me is like a snake eating its own tail. I write something and I edit it and find something interesting that I might want to make a video about. I make that video, which gives me insight into the writing process. I go back to writing. I edit something, I find something worth making a video about. I make a video about it. It goes round and round in this cycle. But there's always a voice in my head that says, you need to write more, that's what all of this is about, and I'm acutely aware of that. But to make this video a little less about me, I think we can take this tip and extrapolate it. He mentioned that for a literary career, it's more important to write than be written about. But I think if we take the literary career part out of it, we can boil it down to the bare necessity, it's more important to write than do anything else. As much as actively engaging with the craft of writing and trying to learn things can help you become a better writer, there's no quicker and more effective way to do it than just writing. By all means, learn things, take notes, take on information, but don't forget to demonstrate that by actually writing. Put it into practice. That's how you improve. You can't be a writer without having tricks. What's important is the legitimacy of those tricks, up to what point they're used and to what degree. This is a really great point to make, and it reminds me of when I first started properly writing, and that was at university. I had a task to write two and a half thousand words, uh, a short story, but I ended up writing 10,000. And what I spent most of my time on in that 10,000 words 
was making sure the plot was really clever, that the reader wouldn't see it coming and that it was cool and that there was moments in it that, you know, were kind of cinematic and I was focused entirely on the wrong kind of stuff. That story was full of the tricks that Garcia Marquez is talking about here. And what I didn't realize at the time is that those tricks are sort of like fast food. It's good for a moment, but it doesn't really sustain you for all that long. I wasn't using the tricks in that story to build the reader's immersion or to help them engage or empathize with my characters to deepen my characterization. I was using them because I thought they were cool and they thought people would think I was cool for having written it, I'm being honest. But what actually happened was those tricks were momentary. They came and went really quickly without much of an effect on the reader. That story ended up quite soulless and pretty forgettable, really. And that's because I'd used all of these tricks to no other end than just impressing someone in the moment. However, I still use some of those very same tricks today, but I always do it with the aim to increase the reader's buy-in or to, to reflect the human condition back on the reader and to make some kind of point that they can engage with and understand. I want to prompt some kind of emotional investment or reaction from a reader because that's what makes them remember your story and that's what makes them get shivers down their spine when they finish it. And you can use all kinds of tricks of the trade to do that as long as what's behind it is something that's worth keeping and worth having and makes a bit more of a point. I tend to evaluate these tricks in my writing by considering what I think the reader will think of them and what their reaction will be to them as they continue through the story. And it turns out fairly often that I just need to kill my darlings and get rid of them because they don't really add to anything, anything lasting or meaningful. I think to some extent these tricks are like seasoning on what should already be a nutritious meal of a story, if that makes sense and doesn't sound ridiculous. I want to give you another quote from Gabriel Garcia Marquez, and if you take nothing else from this video, remember this one. The only possible advice is to keep on writing, to continue and continue to write. There really is no better way to grow as a writer than to just stick at it and gain knowledge and experience. Toni Morrison was a great example of that. To see what I made of her tips and advice for writers, watch this video next. Thank you so much for watching as always, and happy writing.